Right, welcome to this next episode. We are just in the process of cleaning off this DPM, just, just giving it a light brush. It doesn't have to be meticulously clean. And we've got rolls of DPM here that we're gonna be putting down as well on top because there are crinkled, crinkled up bits like that. So we're just cleaning off the worst of it and then we are gonna start framing out the walls. I'm gonna show you a picture now, which is a cross section of the wall that has been specified by the structural engineer. So as you can see on the picture, we are doing 150 mil depth of wall. And then we have two skins of OSB, one inside and one outside. And in between there's gonna be about 130 mil of insulation, 20 mil air gap inside. Then we're going to counter batten on the outside, we'll put some breathable felt on the OSB, counter batten and then render board and then K-Rend on the outside, on the inside. We're gonna do the same actually to a degree. We're gonna counter batten underneath, so we'll have the vapor control barrier, then we will counter batten, then we'll do the plaster board and that will give us a service void in which we can hide all of our cables and we can run all, our, our, all of our electrics and we maintain the integrity of the vapor control barrier. So what we're gonna start by doing is we're gonna start along this wall here we're literally going to work out the exact height of the wall. Now obviously we have a sole plate, which is a timber on its side. We have the studs coming up and then we're gonna have a double header plate. The top height of that is gonna be 2.4 meters. So you can work backwards from that very easily, knowing that we have 50 mil depth timbers. So that means we've got 50 mil at the bottom, 100 mil at the top, because there are two of them. So that's 150 mil, taken off 240. That equals 225. 225 is the length of each stud, and it's gonna sit on this. So what we're gonna do, we'll, we'll roll out the, the DPM, we'll leave that in place. We will then basically build the wall flat on the floor here, and we will stand it up into place. And what we'll do is we'll, have put, the, we'll put the outside skin of OSB on, then we'll lift it up into place and we'll brace it. Then we can do the next one and work all, all the way along. As you may have seen, I can't remember if I've shown you the plans. If not, then I might quickly throw up an image of the rear elevation now. Obviously, you're seeing it in reverse, but we're going to have around a four meter wide sliding door here. And then there'll be a, a two meter opening for the window for the kitchen over there. So actually, that's a big, long space that I don't need to frame out. But I do need a flitch plate above the top here. So that obviously needs to be supported and I'll show you how to support that when we do it. We'll then carry on and we'll work our way back to the wall here on our neighbor's side. Now what we're gonna do on the neighbor's side is we're actually going to, when we build the wall, we'll put the skin of OSB on the outside of the timber, then we'll do the counter battens, then we'll do the render carrier board. It'll be a heavier wall, but it will just mean that we don't have to combat, combat with this bamboo to be able to try and fix from the outside. It's just gonna make our lives much, much easier. Obviously the renderer is gonna to have to combat that, but that'll be one less thing that we have to worry about. That's their problem, not mine. And that's that. To make my life a little bit easier and to make it easier to conceptualize, I've done a drawing, it is not to scale, of the extension where we are. This here is this wall behind me. That length there, to the very outside of the brick, to the inside corner here of that brick, not the timber, of the brick, is 4.7 meters, or 4,700. My timbers are 3.6 long, so I need, to, I need one extra length of 1,100 for the sole plate, and two extra lengths of 1,100 for the header plate, because I'm doing a double header. That gets me my 4,700. The stud heights are gonna be 2.4 overall, and I'm having one sole plate, which is 50 mil, and then two header plates, which is another 100 mil, so there's 150. 2400 minus 150 equals 2250. So that is the height that I'm cutting each of my studs to. And each of my studs are gonna be spaced at 400 centers, same as everything else. So that's what we're gonna do. A lot, light little dusting of snow, a whole load of those off cuts. And all of our studs are cut, which is great. So now out of these, these are 1.35. I can chop those down ever so slightly to get down to my one 100, 
which is what I need for the top plate and the bottom plates and then we can start getting this thing constructed. So what I've done is I have marked up on this, this is the sole plate, the base plate, the mud plate if you're in America, uh, where the 400 centers are and each of the studs is going to be sitting up against this wall. This is just what I'm, this is just how I mark it. I think other people mark it other ways, I don't know. Obviously, because it's a 3.6 length timber, it's divided into 400. We have a mark here, so this is gonna be braced on two sides with a timber straight down the middle. And that's 400 there, 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 and there. And what Warren is doing is he's just placing these on like that, just so that we know where they're gonna go. So it's a little bit windy obviously because we're about to stand up this massive sail and so the wind has noticed that and has decided to pick up. We've swept off, we've rolled out a brand new nine inch DPM just for this point here. We're gonna make sure it's right up nice overlapping at the edge so there's a little bit of fall off it. Like you see at that end there, there's a bit of fall off. That's what we're gonna have here. So we're just gonna nudge that over there, perfect like that that'll sit and then it will hang out slightly which is perfect so you can see the this is the floor joist on the inside of the room what we're going to do now is we're going to just wait for a little break in the wind and then the two of us are going to start trying to lift this up we're going to prop it we're going to jack it up because these are heavy okay so it is just a bit too windy for us to be able to do this just the two of us i don't know if you can hear the wind if the microphone's all right, we're, we're a little bit off, but it's just too much. So I've called my brother-in-law, Barry. You've seen him in other videos. Uh, he's on his way over now to help us. We've just temporarily braced it like that. And we're just gonna basically wait for Barry to arrive. Once he does, the three of us will be able to move it, hopefully without it falling over again. And yeah, we'll go from there. Right. We are up, the wall is up, and better than that, the wall is plumb, which is really nice. And also, you can see across here, no gaps. It's nice and flat and level. And it's plumb at every point. We've checked it in the middle, we've checked it at the ends. We are plumb everywhere and we're up. So having a third pair of hands is basically essential. There's a guy that I follow on YouTube, a Canadian guy called The Crazy Framer. He does all this on his own and I think he's an absolute wizard. I don't know how he does it because these are heavy, heavy walls. But we've done that one. What we're going to do now is we're going to make the next part because it's very, very short, the next part, because the next long section is going to be the flitch plate and it's going to be a four meter or 3.8 meter opening for the window. So there's nothing to go there. It's just going to be a short section that goes here and that's very easy and that will also brace this corner very nicely, add a lot more structural support to here. We can put a cross brace in going this way and that'll be a really, really nice, uh, really nice bit of bracing there. Okay, so I've just spent some time figuring out exactly where this next wall is going to end because it's impossible to see on here where the window is gonna be, where the sliding door is gonna be. What I've done though, is I've gone to the inside of the house and I have figured out, and I'll show you on the wall, I figured out exactly where the edge of the internal wall is. So this will all be opened up from here and this will be where the kitchen wall starts. Transferred that down and I left a, I left a board in place exactly where that mark is using the spirit level to get plumb. We then pulled off that all the way to the end here and we got to this mark here on this outside edge. Now. The structural engineer has stated that I need my flitch plate above the window to have, and the steel beam is four meters and it needs to have a hundred mil of bearing. So I've come in from that a hundred mil and then I measured from, we went from this outside one, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We went from that outside one there. We then measured across four meters and that brought me to here. So then I've come in 100 mil from there. So I know that I've got 100 mil of bearing on this side and 100 mil of bearing on that side, which is basically two studs side by side. 
that are basically that are both going to be sat on the sole plate. So there'll be a sole plate butted up against that up to here and there'll be a head plate lapped on there. You can see the gap. There'll be a head plate lapped on there as well. And then there'll be two studs that come up and there'll be a flitch plate which then runs across which you will see in a minute. So that is a nice big opening that I do not need to worry about framing which is good and it also means that this next section from here across is slightly shorter for framing and then we've just got that little wall left which we'll probably do tomorrow. Just figuring out what I'm doing with this. This is going to be the bifold door opening. I've got one sole plate and obviously you've got two head plates. It's a bit hard to see because of the light but I have drawn them on there. Two head plates like that. One, two, there. And then this is a lintel here. This is an 8x3 which is horizontal basically compared. Say if that's flat, this is on its edge. There are two of them with a piece of steel sandwich so it'll have an 8x3 like that. You'll have a steel plate and then you'll have another 8x3 like that where 8 inches is up this way and 3 inches is that way. So that gets turned around and placed into here which means that my height of the bifold door is going to be 2.15 or 2150 meters high so that I can have one continuous head plate that goes the whole way across the top and that way it ties this wall to the flitch plate and I think that just gives it a bit of extra strength so I then obviously can work out exactly what the height of these these are these are called cripples because they sit underneath a lintel or a you know a, an opening and these are studs that go all the way up to the head plate It was clear blue skies this morning and now at five to four it is chucking it down again which is a real pain a real pain we'll have to try and pick this up tomorrow but I think it's gonna be raining tomorrow as well to be honest right it's the next morning and this is all still standing which is a relief We've got a couple of corner braces in there, this way and this way. That's perfectly plumb and level and true, which is excellent. Now we're laying out for this. Obviously this is the big gap here. Got a double header on this side and I've got that matching double header on that side. What I'm doing is I'm laying out for this wall, but here is going to be the kitchen and we're having the classic window above the kitchen sink. So I needed to lay out and, and I've laid out now. I figured out how I, our window is going to be two meters wide. But not only that, but I need to figure out how high up off the floor it's going to be. And the way I've done that is that a standard counter height, a standard kitchen unit height is around 900, and then 30 mils for the counter, and then we want about 150 mil for the splashback. And that basically takes me up to 105.5, is what I've worked out is 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 where the window height is going to be. And then I'll, and then I've taken so that the mathematicians of you will realize that that is 45 mil less than the numbers I've just stated, but that's because I've added another stud on top because you have your jack studs which come up and then you have a stud that sits on top of that. You'll see what I mean in a second, but that's basically how you work out how high you want the window to be. You work from the floor up or from the roof down, from the, seat, from the ceiling down, that, that's fine, but I've gone from the bottom up because I have known variables at that point, i.e., the height of the counter, the depth of the, sorry, the height of the um, cabinets, the, um, the depth of the counter, how much uh, splashback height we want up against behind the sink, and then adding a little bit extra for a windowsill, and then accounting for the fact that there is the, uh, the timber that sits on top of these little jack studs, or the cripples as they're called. So that's our double end stud here, which is gonna support the flitch plate got the main studs, then we've got the cripples, and we've got the bit that goes underneath the window, and then we've got our normal studs again right up to the end. Then we can put the double head plates on. There's no overlap on those because it's just under 3.6 meters in length, so that works out really well. They can just both be bolted and, uh, and screwed together. And that's that, that's this wall done.
just need to then sheathe it and we are good to lift okay we haven't we haven't leveled any of this up yet we've just checked the span across we're about to make up the flitch plate that goes across here so we've got a nice big piece of steel and we've got two timbers they're 4.8 at the minute we're going to cut them both down to four meters we're going to bolt them together and then we're going to lift it up in place we'll use the tower and the ladder and the steps and stuff to get that up and then we can run the head plate along so you'll see i've left that osb high there that's because the head plate, there's going to be a head plate that's connecting the whole lot all the way across the back there and makes it really nice and strong. Right, the flitch plate sandwich has been made. Timber, steel, timber bolted together. We've bolted and chemically fixed these down. They've been going off for the last hour now, so they're nice and secure in place. And we are about to lift this up in here. Then I can string, put the header the whole way across the, on the top of that. Right, so it's just around four o'clock now, starting to get a little bit dark. So we're gonna stop for the day. We had a load of rain this morning, but then it dried up this afternoon. We are just getting this wall sheathed and we'll be lifting it in place. It's worth pointing out on this wall here, because this is close to the boundary, as, and when I say close, the, uh, the, the planning definition is it is within one meter of the boundary, not the property, the boundary line. This has to be sheathed in fireboard or masterboard, 30 minute fire rated board basically. So even if we could finish it now, we're not going to because that board isn't arriving until tomorrow. So we're gonna pause it here. We're gonna just quickly temporarily support that again. And then in the morning when the fireboard arrives, we can finish boarding this. We'll also put the breathable membrane on it and the counter battens and then we'll stand it up and then all that needs to go on that side is the render board which hasn't which I haven't ordered yet because I don't need to do any of that just yet and it also would make it insanely heavy trying to get that up if we were doing all of that in one go as it is it's going to be a bit tricky I don't know if you need to do this I'm just doing it for the sake of posterity but I have also left this DPM long and obviously these cables are here in the way, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this DPM running up the wall so that when it's bolted in, there's just a little bit of protection between the, the timber and the wall there. Uh, I don't know if it's meant to be done that way. I haven't seen that anywhere. It just seems like a sensible thing to do, and it certainly isn't going to do any harm because it's going to have all of these same fixings in, bolts straight into the wall, and then chemical fixed. So yeah, almost finished. We got the, the rest of it up. That's the kitchen window. Those are the sliding doors, flitch plate and head plate. That double header is gonna carry on the whole way across as well. And then we can carry on with the walls down the side of the property down here. Before I put this wall up, we are just putting on the fireboard. It's only six mil. 6mm thick fireboard but it gives a 30 minute fire rating from the outside and then obviously we use plasterboard and uh, skimmer plaster from the inside which gives 30 minutes fire rating from the inside. So that's the masterboard going on there. I'll be putting another sheet of it here obviously. This one doesn't matter so much about the uh, joints butting up, lining up. You don't need to worry about it in quite the same way as you do with OSB. You just need to get it on. This masterboard basically cuts the same as plasterboard. So get a knife, run it along the edge, and then snap. So that's what I'm going to do now to get it in line with that one there. The rest of it is nice and flush all the way around. I've done holes at around 40 mil, sorry, 400 mil, basically in line with the, uh, the, the studs. So we're just giving the final sweep off here of the damp proof membrane. 
we've got these boards. These are cut to the exact distance from there, right up snug to that wall, and they're ready to go. I've spoken to my neighbour. She's very happy for me to come and step on the property because when I when we lift this wall up, I'm going to be kind of stuck somewhere in there and hopefully have enough space. I mean, it's not it's not ideal. I, ideally, there wouldn't be anything there, but this is the real world, and people have neighbours, so that is what it is. So the reason we've left all this open is because it allows us, A, there's less weight, but B, it allows us to stand, stand the wall up. I can get through at this point here. I can fix the final board, the final stud up into the wall with the DPM behind it. I can then, we can then put that final stud in there. We, we actually put it in, but we've taken it out. So I'll be taking those nails out and I'll toenail it in rather than nailing it from the bottom and then we can fix all the other boards in place. Right, I'm gonna stick a time lapse on and hopefully this comes out okay. Hopefully. Right up on the top of the roof and you can see we've got the double head plate move that back we've got the double head plate on this bit here this is still a single head plate because what we're going to do is we're going to run the second one all the way across on top of that flitch plate the whole way along i'm going to take out that little bit of osb there and i'm going to move this flitch plate over slightly so what i've done is i've drilled down in through the top here so this corner is perfectly pinned and you can see there We've got the OSB, we've got the master board, and then we've got the batten on the outside, so that's really nice. So these walls are perfectly parallel now, perfectly square to one another. This is perfectly flush here. I could put a little bit more OSB and master board and batten all down there just to fill this outside edge like that but it was much easier doing it this way. And it also, I don't know if you'll have seen on the time-lapse, I have infilled this corner here with insulation because it goes back, all the way back to here. I would never have been able to get insulation in and I wanted it full filled. So that is fully filled with insulation in there. What we'll do on this side is we'll put battens down here because that gives us our 20 mil air gap all the way down this bit. There'll be, a 20, there'll be the batten, 25 mil air gap, and then we'll put render carrier board. There's no need for the master board on this side. It was just on that side there. So now we basically just need to go and finish off the last bolt up into the wall here and the last stud and try and carry this boarding on across the end of here with all of this bamboo in the way. But it's nice that this is up and it is really, really secure. Okay, so this wall is up almost. Still got to do a fixing in there, obviously. And do the head plate, the final head plate that goes across. You can see this DPM that I've done and these fixings. I'm going to add another couple in just to make sure because this brick at work is best part of 100 years old. I'm not happy with how secure it is. You can kind of see a little bit of movement in it when it wobbles and this is you know the, one of the main ways that it's tied to the house. Obviously the, the, the uh, kind of ledger board for the roof is going to be tied in as well but I just want belt and braces. I want, I want as many fixings in there as I can get, basically. So I think I'll chemically fix some bolts in, same as I did on the, on the floor. The observant among you will have noticed that we didn't put that house wrap on the outside. It is just too difficult to get it on with all of that bamboo there. But I wanted the wall up and I wanted the fireboard. So what I'm going to do when we go around there, I will actually be taking off the, the blue battens. I put some blue battens on there. I'll be taking those off. I'll be covering it in felt, then I will put those battens back on. But all of that bamboo is coming down first before I can do that. The, the, the neighbour's already said that he was going to be doing that, it just hasn't got around to it yet. So for now, we have this structure in place, which is really good. So it means that we can, the structural side of things at this back area is now done. We just need to do the side here. Oh, and the other thing we're going to do is we'll throw up another another head of plate up along here, you know, just to finish just to finish that all off, tie it in. <laughs> 